you guys and welcome to another so long it's gonna be a great week of us hanging out together if you don't know me i am Lindsay, and i sew my own clothes and i have for years and years i started this channel to share my love and excitement for garment sewing and over the years um, that is still the same, but I've also added a teaching element to what we do here. And that is what has sparked these sew alongs. But this pattern that we're going to be working on this week is Simplicity 9642. Um, I chose it because it has different bust cup sizes. Um, and then it also has two sleeve options, which is great for transitional weather and then three different lengths. So it should be a lot of fun, a lot of really cute details in this pattern, including like, oops, like an under bust gather, um, princess seamed skirt and a very, very prominent puffy sleeve, V-neck, optional ruffle hem. So it's going to be a good one. So with all my sew alongs, I must be organized. And so I started doing these um, little things for myself, making these to-do list and checklist and all that kind of stuff. And then I realized, hey, there's some people out there that probably would really like these. And <laughs> to no surprise, you guys have gobbled them up. Um, I make a free to download sew along workbook for absolutely every single sew along I do. So this is the workbook for Simplicity 9642. It includes everything that you need to make this pattern. So you will have a project planner. Um, this is what you're gonna be working on the first couple of days here where you're gonna find inspiration. You're gonna come up with um, uh, fabric options that you like. You're going to jot down your sizing, any alterations that you need to make, and then you're gonna make a list of all the project materials that you need, including notions, and then you can check it off whether you have it in your stash or you need to go buy it. Um, there's also a price, um, column there too if you want to keep track of how much this project is going to cost you that's always fun then there's also a project checklist where we're going to go through each one of these steps over the next several days um, by the end of it you will have all of this filled out and checked off it also has a daily checklist so once we get started sewing on thursday the fourth video you will be able to start checking these things off these first three videos are going to be all about prep so if you're good on prep and you know how to pick your size, you know how to make your alterations, you know how to cut out your fabric and which fabric to choose, you can just skip right to the sewing portion, which starts day one of the sewing along. Um, so that it covers it. At the end, there is also a um, project summary where you can write down just sort of your thoughts about the pattern. If you make it again, changes you'll make and stuff like that. Like I said, this workbook is completely 100% free. Um, download it. It's a lot of fun to check things off. It's very satisfying. Um, and that's this, I'll also be referring to this a lot throughout the sew along just to help all of us know kind of where we are in the process of completing this pattern and helping all of us stay organized. So this video is all about how to choose your size. This is, this is something that will make or break your project. Um, as you finish it you will realize it's either something that you're going to love and wear all the time or something that you just don't feel comfortable in for one way or another so this is a very critical video i have my very own system for how i choose my size and sewing patterns it's called the fast fit system i have worksheets that are available on my website again i will link those in the description box and then i've also put i think maybe a hundred of them into this workbook format that you can get on Amazon. I will link to that as well. Um, but the fast fit system is what I use for literally every single pattern that I make. Um, I will take my measurements every single time and I will fill out one of these worksheets absolutely every single time. So that's what we're we'll using today to determine what size we are going to make. I'm going to be demonstrating for you how I come up with the size of the pattern that I'm going to make using my measurements, um, and those calculations. Um, so follow along with that, but obviously use your own measurements. Um, so that brings me to the materials that you are gonna need, the, the stuff that you're gonna need for today's video to go ahead and gather it up. Um, one is a measuring tape. I'm going to be showing you where to measure yourself and the measurements that you're gonna need um, to kind of determine which size that you're going to need for this project. You're also going to need kind of obviously a calculator and a pencil. 
let's get into this and starting off with how to measure yourself and which measurements you're going to need to determine the size to make. I have got my trusty ditto form here. This is an exact replica of my body. That's what makes the ditto form so incredible. Um, you literally get on like this little, I don't know, like a lazy Susan and like you spin around and like this and it's there, there's a 3D camera capturing all the measurements of your body and that 3D imagery is sent off to where they make the foam form and then it is wrapped in fabric afterwards. She is great. I love her so much for so many reasons. Um, in order to show you guys how to best take measurements, I'm going to just be using her kind of as if she were my model. So I'm not standing around turning backwards and making it all awkward for everybody. Okay. So the first measurement you're going to want to take is your high bust. Your high bust is above your bust line, but underneath your armpits coming around the back and it should be relatively perpendicular to the floor or sorry parallel to the floor it should be flat all the way around and then just coming up over your breast tissue this is a hard like foam so it's not pushing in as it will on your actual body so yours will be a little bit flatter but when we do this i get 38 and a half on my high bust so go ahead and write down whatever number you get for that and then the next one is your full bust and that is coming across the bust apex like so and again parallel to the floor like so for me i am getting 39 and a half okay so high bust is 38 and a half full bust is 39 and a half the difference between those two numbers one inches two inches three inches four inches um, indicates what bust cup size you are. If it's one inch, it's an A, two inches is a B, three inches is C, and four inches is D. Okay, so the next step is the waist. And the waist, as you can see, is very high up. I have a high waist, but my belly button is way down here. Even if you have a lower waist, it's still not gonna be where your belly button is, most likely. What you're looking for is the smallest part of your body. The easiest way to find that is to tip over to the side like a teacup and you can feel this little like ridge almost where your ribs are like folding over in on your side. Um, so there's like a little bit of like a roll of skin there, a little indentation. That is where your waist is. So you can see on this dress, mine should come in line with this here, way up high, okay? Um, and that measurement for me is 33. And then the last measurement that you need to get your size is a is your hip measurement. Um, so we're coming down here. Again, the hip measurement is lower than you think it is. You can actually see my hip bones are right here. And my hip measurement is way down here. It is the fullest part of your bum. So if you have a higher set bottom, it might be a little bit higher. If your bottom sags a little bit, it might be a little bit lower. So mine is kind of somewhere in the middle. All right. So measurement, measure way down low at the fullest part of your bum. Mine comes in at 46 and a half. Okay. So now I'm going to write that number down and that is what I'm going to use for the next part of the video. So I'll meet you over at the cutting table and we'll start using the fast fit work. Okay, so now that we have our measurements taken, we are going to work our way through the fast fit system. This is something that is going to allow us to analyze the patterns, body chart size, the finished garment measurements, including the designer's um, design ease. Um, and also help us analyze sort of just how we like things to fit. Sometimes people just like a looser fit. Sometimes people like a tighter fit. Um, so we'll be able to kind of use all of those points of reference to figure out the best size um, for us to cut. So starting with the body chart size, we are going to come through here and we're going to go to the body measurement chart located here. Sometimes they're on the little tab of the envelope, but on this pattern, they are in the actual chart itself. So um, first things first is to figure out our cup size, and which is the difference between high bust and full bust, like I illustrated at the ditto form. And that is one inch, so that means my cup size is an A. And then 
the body chart size. Okay, so we're gonna find 39 and a half on this chart. So we're gonna go bust and we're gonna come all the way over until we find 39 and a half, which is in between a 16 and an 18. It is closer to the 18. So I think I'm gonna err on the side of the 18. If it is dead smack in the middle, you always go smaller. But because I'm only half an inch away from the 18, that could easily just be a measuring error also. I'm gonna do the 18. So that equals 40 inches on this chart. Now the waist is 33 inches. So I'm coming down and I'm gonna find 33 inches and I am right smack dab in the middle between an 18 and a 20. So on this example, I am going to size down to a size 18, which is 32 inches. And then the hip, I'm 46 and a half. And if you come over, you'll notice that I am off the chart. I do not fit technically into this pattern, but I will illustrate that if you are, depending on the design of the pattern, if you're three, five, sometimes eight inches bigger than the pattern, you can still make the garments. Um, really, it comes down to how many vertical seams there are. And in this pattern, there's one, two, three, four, five. And with the generous 5 8 inch seam allowance that we have here in America, that's a lot of wiggle room. So I don't feel very uncomfortable buying a pattern that when I'm off the chart, it, when it has that many vertical seams, which is why I'm going ahead and doing this, even though technically it wouldn't fit. Um, but I'll show you how to determine how much you need to add to the pattern to get it to fit um, and how to do that in this sew along. So I'm gonna write down the information for a 20 um, and then that equals 44 inches and then we'll figure out the rest of it as we go. All right, so now we're gonna find the finished garment measurements. The big four has been getting so good lately at putting our finished garment measurements on the envelope. So we have them here. So let's just keep things simple and use them here. Now, again, I'm an A cup, so I'm gonna be using this set of information here. If you're B, C, or D, you use these. You know, they get bigger as the cup sizes increase. So I'm an A bust cup for an A size 18. Now I'm comparing an A to the 18 that I am going to cut in theory. Um, so I come over to the 18 and it is 42 and a half. So that's all I'm writing down here, 42 and a half. The waist also for a size 18 is, waist is here. So I'm coming over to an 18 and that is 36 and a half. And then the hip is, off the chart, but I'm using a size 20, so that's gonna be 51 and a half. All right, now we are going to calculate the ease that has been added to this pattern. There's a standardized kind of wearing ease just so that you can like move around in your garment, and then the designer adds in the ease that they want to get this look. So the ease in this pattern is the difference, or every pattern, is the difference between section three and section two, and I'm really bad at math. So I always use a calculator because I don't trust myself. So 42 and a half minus 40 equals two and a half inches of ease. And then 36 and a half minus 32 is four and a half. And then 51 and a half minus 44 equals seven and a half. Okay, so now this is when kind of experience and information, you know, really will help you out. I do have in my garment sewing guide of guides, the ultimate garment, whatever it's called, um, it's free download on my website. I'll link it in the description box. I do have sort of suggested ease depending on the style and the fit of the garment. So it'll have something for like very close fitting, semi-fitted, loose fitting, and then the kind of the ideal ease for each of those, um, depending on the body part. So for a bust that is sort of close fitted, like this one, anything between two and three is pretty good. This one, you might even be able to go up to a four and still feel pretty confident, but I'm gonna leave mine at two and a half. I don't mind a close fitting bust. Um, so two and a half is good for me. And then for the waist, now this photo here is a little bit deceiving because she's walking and got her hip kind of popped out. So it looks very close fitted, um, you know, showing that curve of her body. But if you look at the line drawings, you can see it is a little bit more loose fitting. The, the drag lines from the drape of the fabric are here. And you can see from the 
like the waist is down here somewhere. So from the waist down, it is sort of just trying to be like an A-line. So I know that even though my bodice is supposed to fit kind of, you know, relatively close fitting, as we go down, the waist and the hip get looser and looser to kind of give you that A-line effect. This is also where I'm going to say to myself, well, how do I want it to fit? Like, what am I comfortable in? And I know I'm not super comfortable in something that's really clingy to my bottom in a stable woven fabric. So I'm okay with four and a half and seven and a half. And again, I'm going to be able to more easily take away from this um, after I do my first fitting than it is to add on. So I'm just going to stick with this. These are all very much within like the standardized range. Nothing's too out of the ordinary here. So I'm good with the pattern ease of this pattern. All right. So now we're going to talk about intended fit. So this is if this pattern was custom made for my body, given this this amount of pattern ease and my actual measurements for getting the body chart size and finished measurement chart sizes all together. If this were custom made for me by whoever designed this pattern, given this ease amount, what is the intended fit? So you add your measurements and the pattern ease together. So 39 and a half plus two and a half is 42. And then you do 33 plus four and a half is 37 and a half. And then we'll do 46 and a half plus seven and a half. And that is 54. Okay. So if this were custom made for me, this is the circumference of each of these areas. Now this is the circumference of the actual pattern. So these two things have to match. So what do we need to do in order to get these two things to match is what goes in section six. So size to cut is gonna be an 18 with half an inch added because I need to go half an inch bigger in order to get to this number. For the waist, it's one inch. So again, size 18 with a one inch increase. Okay, now remember the hip, I was off the chart by a size or two, um, but I only need to add three and a half inches to the size 20. 3.5 inches added. And with all those seam allowances, it's gonna be really easy to do that. So I will show you how to add all of this to your pattern pieces in the next video, okay? I didn't wanna overwhelm it with too much. This is all you should be worried about now. Do this first and then come back and see how to alter. It'll start to make a lot more sense when you just have this information, this is what you know you're going with, and then we'll apply it to the pattern pieces in the next. All right, so we already have some things that we can check off of our lists in the workbook. Um, in the project planner page, you can write down your size to make with the alterations that you need. That's everything that we wrote down in section six of the Fast Fit Worksheet. You can also come over to the project checklist and check off the first two things under prepping. Uh, well, assuming you're pre-washing your fabric while you're also doing these tasks. So pre-wash your fabric to the fast fit worksheet and then we will start to work on alterations in the very next video. If you are looking for the rest of the videos in this series, I have both a playlist going as well as in the description box each video's direct link so you can find it either way. But any questions that you have about how to use the Fast Fit Worksheet, um, just general questions, leave those in the comment section of this video. If you are curious to know if the math that you've done for your Fast Fit Worksheet and the results that you're getting make sense, it's best to, sit, to reach out to me on Instagram that way. Um, YouTube is just not great about back and forth conversation. So if this is going to be like, you ask me a question and I respond and then you respond back, YouTube's not great for that. Instagram DMs is the best place. Plus you can send me a photo of your fast fit worksheet filled out and that'll really help me understand what you're talking about as well. So general questions, feel free to leave them in the description box, everything else, take it to Instagram, but that is going to do it for me for now. I will see you all back here very soon where we will start altering our pattern pieces.